Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another Crypto.com live video AMA. I'm your host, Maria Vontish, and today we'll be joined by Elliot Hill, Director of Communications, and Robert Keogh, CFO at Veracity. Veracity is a blockchain company looking to create an entirely new experience in esports, ad tech, and digital rights management. This new transparent economy is powered by a new cryptocurrency called VRA. Founded in 2017, Veracity team is on a mission to enable a new decentralized digital ecosystem, disrupting the commercial dynamic in the traditional video on demand market. Every view is accounted for through a proprietary patented proof of view blockchain technology, providing accurate, secure, and auditable audience metrics, removing fake views, bots, and ad fraud. Without further ado, let's welcome Elliot Hale and Robert Keogh from Veracity. Hey, Maria. How's it going? Great to be here. Welcome to the AMA. Hi, Maria. How are you doing? Yeah, good, good. It's uh, midway through the week, which is, which is always good. It's been probably uh, one of the busiest weeks I've had in a while. Uh, we've been organizing a lot of things, which I think we're going to deep dive into a little bit later in the AMA. So all good on this side, yeah. Amazing. So excited to, to um, have you here today with us. Um, can you can we start with brief introductions from uh, from you, Elliot and Robert? Um, intros of yourselves and backgrounds. Yeah, sure. So my name's Elliot, as I think um, I think you all know. Uh, so some of our like some of the viewers watching, I'm sure, are from Veracity and probably know me already. But for those who don't, uh, I joined Veracity back in January. Um, I lead communications and marketing at Veracity. So my background, uh, I've worked in crypto for the last six years now, which has gone incredibly quick. Um, it sounds like no time at all, but I think in blockchain, that's, I would say it's like equivalent to a Lifetime Achievement Award. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with some, some of the biggest blockchain protocols, such as Cardano. Um, I've worked across the DeFi industry as well, uh, some digital asset banks. Um, and now, yeah, I, I bring my expertise to Veracity. Um, so it's been, I mean, it already feels like a work for Veracity for well over a year. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm really excited about our product suite. Uh, so yeah, happy to join you all. Hand over to, to Rob. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Robert Keogh. I'm the uh, CFO of Veracity. Uh, I, I'm a qualified accountant and I've been uh, in the accounting industry for 20 years now. Uh, always within digital media. So my background is publishing. So I've worked with Future PLC and the Financial Times. And I've also worked with a number of ad tech businesses, um, taking them from startup to to uh, to sale to large organizations. Uh, I kind of I, I joined Veracity in 2018, just prior to the ICO. So yes, uh, yeah, Lifetime Achievement Award, definitely, Elliot. It's uh, four long, exciting years at Veracity for me. <laughs> Amazing. It's like you're both industry veterans. Elliot, can you tell us a little bit on, about how you got into blockchain uh, and crypto? You've got a bit of history in different areas in the crypto space. So what made you take the leap to, to join Veracity this year? Yeah, for sure. Um, just hearing Rob say ICO then is sort of like a massive throwback. Like that's definitely a, a term we don't hear anymore. Um, and that was basically around the time that I got into to blockchain was around like the, the ICO craze. It was the end of 2016. I think Ethereum launched their ICO in 2014. That's the first one that I'd heard about. Uh, but the way that like the route that I got into crypto was um, through communications background. Uh, I had already, always wanted to work in crypto ever since like sort of finding it. Um, and that was my most transferable skill was writing and communicating. So that's sort of my route into crypto. And I started off doing, you know, uh, marketing and comms roles um, just at an entry level and, and you know, like uh, work my way up basically. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a challenging space to communicate in. Um, I feel like a lot of projects, that's probably their biggest challenge is communication um so it always it, it's never a boring job put it that way <laughs> amazing it's so exciting to to work on the comms front um in blockchain for sure and rob what about you what motivate you to move over to the crypto space uh it was in 2017 for me and started to hear about ethereum and, and bitcoin and started to read about smart contracts and it's really the 
the power that a smart contract can give to a business, I found really interesting. Uh, whether it's um, zero knowledge proof in, and in terms of push and pull of people's data, I found that part um, kind of in inspiring that you can change so much using blockchain technology. And then that kind of led me into Veracity, which had the, the blockchain and the kind of marrying of the blockchain and ad tech and working for publishers. So which kind of took kind of a personal interest and then my, my industry backgrounds together. And that's kind of how I, how I joined the business. Brilliant. So let's talk about Veracity. What is Veracity? And um, we'd love to hear some background and history of your company. Sure, yeah. So um, I'll start. So Veracity is an entire ecosystem of enterprise focused tools and services. So this includes our Veraview's advertising stack and product layer for digital advertising, which is sort of like our, our first major focus. Um, and it's our most significant product that we bring to market. We also have the Vera Wallet custodial crypto wallet, uh, Vera Player, and soon we'll be rolling out the Veraverse NFT marketplace. We also, within that, have a focus on delivering esports content, and we do this through the Vera esports platform. So the Vera esports platform is um, it's an esports tournament platform where we show esports content. Uh, we're going to get into that a little bit in deeper, I think, later in this AMA. But that contributes to our overall NFT marketplace strategy in a big way. And essentially, Veracity is committed overall from like a, a top-down approach to delivering a better user experience for all stakeholders within the digital content space. And we offer transparency, security, trust um, for advertisers and publishers. And we do this through our painted proof of view technology. So we've sort of got this all-encompassing ecosystem, which I think we're going to really dig down into during the AMA. But that's like the high level view of veracity. I don't know if Rob, you want to add anything to that? Yeah. So the um, the, back, the background of veracity was always to f fight for the publishers and to improve the advertising that we have around the world. So we'll probably discuss the size of the market that's out there, but we definitely saw an opportunity to change the way we're doing things and to improve the digital content space for, for everybody. Great. And can you elaborate on the problems that Veracity is trying to solve within the space? Yeah, sure. So essentially we're yeah, so working... I mean... Sorry, Rob. <laughs> go, on, go ahead. No, you go on, you go on. Uh, essentially, we're working to eliminate online ad fraud um, and NFT fraud further down the line with the rollout of our Veriverse NFT marketplace. But we ultimately, as Rob just said there, want to give greater protections to digital advertisers and digital publishers. Um, and we can do that through content delivery and we can do that through the proliferation of our Veriviews ad tech stack. And you mentioned Veri Wallet, Veri Esports. Can you... Um, um give us a little bit more uh, of a deep dive into the key features of Veracity. Yeah, sure. So as I mentioned there, we've got like a, a top-down ecosystem where Veracity as a brand uh, incorporates all of these multiple services. And I like to call them our product verticals. So Vera Wallet is a custodial solution for VRA, um, which is our ecosystem token, um, and also for accumulating staking rewards so we'll talk a little bit about our staking program later on um, and it's also instrumental to our watch and earn functionality which rewards users for watching uh, videos and primarily we've released that on uh, esports tournaments through vera esports so that sits within the vera player and we're going to make more of a um, a big deal out of that in the future we're going to have more ways to earn rewards and those rewards are going to sit within the, the vera wallet and next up, we've got Vera Esports, which uh, I spoke briefly about in that high level overview. And this is essentially our premier destination for esports tournaments. So we currently have a partnership with Riot Games to stream their Valorant Champions Tour for the APAC region in 2022. So obviously, like a, a AAA games publisher, uh, they're one of our partners at the moment. And we're going to be expanding the scope of the partnerships for Vera Esports uh, as we go forward throughout the year. Um, and we're building out new esports content streams as well. Some of these might include like user-generated content. 
And we also have plans to integrate Vera Esports into our Veraverse NFT marketplace to offer unique in-game item drops. And I'll talk a little bit later about what the scope of Vera Esports is within the Veracity ecosystem and how it fits into our, our business use case. Um, but our ultimate goal for Vera Esports is essentially to drive traffic. Um, so esports as an industry is currently forecasted to reach 600 million viewers a year by 2024 so it's going to be absolutely huge and we're going to use some of these viewers hopefully capture like a significant amount of those viewers push them through vera esports and then we can test out our vera views ad tech stack to see if it's powerful enough to to serve like um clients at scale um, and then we have the vera views ad tech stack uh, we're going to cover that in detail, I think, but essentially it stops ad fraud in its tracks across video on demand content. And then finally, throughout Q2 and Q3 2022, we're going to be rolling out our Veriverse NFT marketplace. Um, so that's going to be like a one stop shop for NFTs, specifically esports NFTs, but also there's going to be white label solutions in there as well. Wow, that's very exciting. Before we um, we uh, deep dive into the NFTs, um, can you uh, tell us about the uh, the patent? The Vera has, Veracity has the first patent, the Attic protocol on the blockchain. Can you explain um, to our audience what it is, what that is? Yeah, happily. So proof of view is um, it's one module of our Veraviews ad tech stack. So this is quite an important concept, really. I think even within our own ecosystem, we could do and, and we are starting to, but we could do a better job of, of explaining it. So the Veraviews ad tech stack um, is a uh, is a fraud prevention tool for advertising um technology and publishers but within that sits many different components some of these components are traditional components that you would find in a legacy ad tech stack and some of them uh, like proof of view are blockchain based modules so proof of view is something that we've developed ourselves it's proprietary um, and it's a blockchain based component of the Veraviews ad tech stack. So proof of view technology ensures that content and advertisements viewed via content players with a proof of view integration are served to actual real viewers. Uh, so the analogy that I like to use about advertising fraud is we can sort of imagine um, a whole warehouse full of televisions um, and the, the warehouse owner says to uh, a brand or an advertiser, I can play your advert to uh, 10 million TV sets. What they would failed to say is that those 10 million TV sets aren't being watched by anyone. They're just sitting in a warehouse and playing out adverts to nobody. That's essentially a good analogy for how a lot of advertising works across the internet now. Although um, these ads have been served, they've been watched by bots, which is basically the equivalent of them being watched by no one. This costs a lot of money to advertisers. I think we've got some uh, metrics, which I'll share in a, a little while. But what Proof of View does is it verifies and stores the data on chain that the people watching those ads or those ads that have been served are actually being watched by real people. And this is really powerful. So Proof of View uh, empowers advertisers to lower their ad spend, but increase their engagement. Um, and it lowers the ad spend that's lost to bots and fake viewers. It also enables publishers to get paid faster for the ads that they do serve through delivering transparent viewership metrics. Um, so Proof of View is already granted a patent in the USA, which is the world's largest ad spend market. Um, it's over $240 billion a year is spent on ads in the USA. We also announced in Q1 2022 that we'd secured a patent in China as well. Um, that's the world's second largest and rapidly growing advertising market. So it's currently worth around $180 billion. Wow, congratulations. Um, you mentioned ad fraud. Can you give us a better idea of what the scale of this is? Sure, yeah. I don't know if Rob wants to add anything here. I'm aware that I've been chatting for a while. Um, but Yeah, yeah. Now that, well, yeah sorry, my, my internet was a bit patchy there, but I think I'm, I'm back in here now, so that's good. Um, well, ad fraud is driven by bots predominantly, and it's, um, it, it's, one, of the largest, or it's one of the largest earners for, uh, for organized crime. And so you know, in 2030, it's, it's, you know, it's going to be absolutely billion. So what we're doing is fighting ad fraud at the, at the lowest level 
and then spreading it out through the system. And we, we believe there's $65 billion of advertising revenue that we can save through ad fraud. Wow. This is, this is, um, the, the scale is definitely incredible. Um, we've got a question from Obi-Wan Productions on Twitter. Uh, what sets you apart from your competitors? Yeah, it's a really good question. So obviously we've just spoken there about the proof of view module. Um, so as you mentioned, we are the first blockchain protocol to have a patented, uh, ad tech solution, um, based on blockchain technology. Um, we, it's often said that some people say that we're the first to have a patent in crypto we're the first to have an ad tech patent in crypto uh, which is pretty major like it's the um basically the the forefront the bleeding edge of this technology in in blockchain um so the most important i mean the usa obviously it's the biggest advertising market in the world at the moment but we were really immensely proud to get this paint and approval in China. So obviously China um, are not so warm to blockchain based technologies or they've, they typically haven't been. Um, and as China increases their GDP, they're becoming one of the most significant advertising markets in the world. So the fact that we've got the first ad tech, uh, ad tech patent, based on blockchain technology in China is absolutely huge. The second way that I think we really set ourselves apart from our competitors, specifically in the blockchain space, so blockchain advertising competitors, um, is that we're integrated into the Brightcove marketplace. So Brightcove is a video communications platform that serves content through a proprietary video player. Um, and it's almost certain that some of the viewers that we've got watching here today uh, will have watched content on the Brightcove player, whether you know it or not. Um, so they power some of the largest publishers in the world. We're talking like UK TV, which is pretty big here in, in the UK. Uh, mm -hmm. Dunkin' Donuts hosts content on Brightcove, uh, McDonald's Japan, and thousands more publishers. These are just, you know, some examples. Um, and our next milestone is to do a full integration of our Veraview's ad tech stack into the Bright Cove player. So all of their all of their um, clients, some of the ones that, that I've just mentioned, could potentially um, switch on Veraviews to protect their ad revenue uh, with the flick of a switch, which will make it much easier for like publishers to actually use and leverage the Veraviews ad tech stack in real life. Um, that we're gonna have ready within Q2. Uh, so we're gonna be ready for publishers to essentially just turn on Veraviews and protect their ad revenue and run ads through the Veraviews ad tech stack. So I think that's really powerful and it, it really puts us one foot forward in how we deliver our solution to enterprise users. Thank you. Um, we, we've got a question from Putch user on Twitter. What's your added value to the, in the anti ad fraud market? Can you elaborate on what's being done to eliminate ad fraud and what, um, what, what are the, the services and the activities that you're proposing also to, um, to, to support creators and, and disrupt this industry? Sure, yeah, I don't know if Rob wants to uh, take this one or maybe do the intro. I'm aware that I'm talking a, a lot, but... <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry, I, I keep kind of flitting in and out. It's really annoying. Um, so the question was um, the, about talking about added value in the ad fraud market, or the anti-ad fraud market, I should say. Correct. Yeah, I mean, there, there are a lot of legacy um, ad stacks and ways to eliminate fraud out there but the unique thing that a veracity does it's they can identify um fraudulent traffic immediately and then by writing that to the blockchain we have this immutable record straight away that the advertiser can see the publisher can see that's that's truly visible to everybody it's then aud auditable so no longer do you have to wait for three to six months after an advertising campaign is finished to reconcile the actual true views to a video we have that kind of instantaneously so that way we can then make sure that publishers get paid faster advertisers are then paying the right amount of money for the right amount of views so it, it really is quite disruptive to the to the current ecosystem um but it's it's really it's a really positive thing and that's i think 
for me as an accountant, getting paid faster is the most important part of my, of my, of my day. And so I think that's really kind of where we're going to add a lot of value to the business. What other, um, yeah. what other parts do you think, Elliot? Yeah, so I was just going to say this like sort of reminds me of this question of why I got into blockchain in the first place and why I, I started working for Veracity. So when I first started in blockchain, um, it was always said that blockchain was a solution looking for a problem. Um, but this is an actual real world use case of where we can take data, make it immutable on the blockchain through metadata and hashed data. Um, and we do this on our own sidechain, by the way. It's a sidechain of Ethereum called the Vera chain. Um, and we store this uh, we store this data on the Vera chain and advertisers and publishers can instantly and transparently access it. But the key thing here is that it's tamper proof. So they know that there's just no way that it could be spoofed. So uh, it re it's trustless. Essentially, it removes trust from the equation. Um, and when we talk about trustless technology, that always sort of sounds like a bad thing thing um, but in business you know a lot of um situations that rely on trust we would love to trust everyone all the time in in life but it, it doesn't always work that way we remove that need for trust and it's just basically black and white the data either is or it isn't there so i think this is one of the most um powerful uses of blockchain for for any business um and i think it's really unique the way that veracity has leveraged it for storing advertising data thank you so much for for this answer it's 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 truly fascinating um the question we've got a question from mateo 961408 on twitter what are the key milestones to look forward to this year you um, covered this um, uh, quite a bit earlier, but is there anything you'd like to add, anything to look out for? Yeah, I think we've covered a few of our major milestones, which are like the NFT marketplace and our integration with Brightcove. Um, but we're, we've got a full roadmap, which is on veracity.io. Uh, that's got all of what we're going to be working on throughout the year. Um, it's actually, we just did a Q1 recap. And I think we actually work on a lot more in the background, but our roadmap is a really good overview of, of what exactly we've been working on. And we're going to talk about that in a bit more depth, I think, later on in the AMA. Um, but yeah, we've got all of everything that you can look forward to is on our roadmap for 2022. Thanks. And with uh, the opportunities that the, the, the market presents with, um, especially the anti-ad fraud opportunities for your services, your proprietary solutions. There are also challenges that I'm sure you're facing as as do all the other um, uh, projects out there. Um, can you elaborate on on what are your biggest challenges um, at the moment in the space or specifically in, in the market that you're discussing? Um, yeah, I think in the industry itself that, that Veracity operates in, um, it's probably like the rising cost of ad fraud. Um, we already discussed like the current metrics and Rob said there that the advertising fraud costs 65 billion a year. Um, but this is actually estimated to rise up to 100 billion by the end of 2023. So working with our B2B partners, um, many of whom we're onboarding this year, they, they want to know how we're going to keep on top of this and how we're going to continue to provide uh, protect their revenues that's definitely a constant challenge but it's one that we're ready for so it doesn't matter how big ad fraud becomes the uh, solution to the problem is is the same and critically the solution that veracity has got is scalable and affordable for publishers and advertisers um Current solutions that exist in the market have varying levels of effectiveness. Uh, there's no single solution apart from Veracity, and we think we've got like the golden goose that can prevent ad fraud and reduce the payment terms for publishers and advertisers. And it's really our blockchain element that allows us to do that. Um, and then I think we've just got general market challenges, which I don't know, Rob, is probably a better place to, to comment on um, in terms of uh, challenges in, in the wider market, the financial markets are some of the things that, that are going on in the world. But I think that affects everyone, right? And we've yeah, well, there, there, are, there, are, there are lots of um, there are lots of external market challenges currently. Um, well, one thing that Veracity will have to overcome it, itself is selling kind of blockchain and crypto to very, very traditional businesses. So it could be a platform such as Sky, who would who don't do anything to do with crypto. 
But so selling to them a a blockchain solution to a very old world problem is would be a very difficult um, problem. But but having having our access through Brightcove, where later on this year it'll be you know literally a flick of a switch where they'll be able to access the full Veracity products. Um, that's one way we're kind of overcome overcoming that problem. But there yeah, there are many challenges within the advertising industry. Thank you. And can you reveal any exciting, um, you mentioned B2B partners, but can you reveal um, or give us a preview of any exciting news or upcoming projects or partnerships? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the most exciting one is going to be the Bright Cove integration. It, it's sort of hard to um, communicate it to, to maybe an audience who doesn't work every day in the ad advertising industry what it essentially means is i mean bright cove have over three thousand publishers on their platform um rob just mentioned you know sky there we're talking like video on demand content that is played around the world 24 7 and there are like many millions of dollars of ads served by these publishers every year through bright cove um in a constant cycle and we spoke there a little bit about the existing solutions that are available in the ad fraud space. There are existing solutions that publishers on Brightcove could leverage. None of them really address this payment terms issue. None of them really have an immutable data storage option. So we believe that once we're um, in a position where we can be easily integrated, like Rob said, with the flick of a switch, and like a lot of these publishers don't necessarily need to know uh, the ins and out of blockchain or, or crypto. They just need to know that it works and it's transparent and that it's trustless. Um, once they can switch it on, um, we think that we're really in a strong position for like widespread adoption, starting on the Bright Cove platform and through the Bright Cove marketplace, but then we can also extrapolate that out to other VOD platforms as well, video on demand platforms. Um, so I think that's the most up exciting upcoming project um, that we've got, the most exciting thing on our roadmap. Um, we've also got some news I want to share later with, with marketing and how we're going to achieve that. Um, but yeah, that would be my answer to that, that question. Super. Well, we'll look out for the updates um, on, on your roadmap on the on veracity.io as well. Um, uh, we've got a question from Garlic Chives on Twitter. Will the patented proof of view protocol technology keep competitors away? In your opinion, is competition the most important factor that would keep veracity from success? If not, what is? Yeah, Garlic Chives, that's a great name. Um, so, I mean, specifically our patented proof of view technology is going to protect our intellectual property from being copied and compromised um, in the countries that we have patent protection in. It's not so much designed, I would say, to prevent competition. Um, I think that's impossible in any industry to prevent competition. But at the same time, competition is quite healthy, really. It makes us continuously improve and reiterate our products. If there was no competition, then we would have no reason to basically roll out a, a blockchain-enabled solution. We could go with the legacy ad stack. Um, but we see this need to constantly reiterate our technology and constantly roll out new features. Um, I think there's relatively limited... Uh, scenarios where veracity is prevented from success we have a 40 strong team we're growing all the time we're onboarding people in the market in the dev team right now we have a 10-year funding runway and a really strong suite of products um, and enterprises enterprise users um, who are lining up to learn more about these projects products sorry and how they can integrate them into their advertising uh, stack so yeah i think we're in a, a really strong position rob i don't know if you've got anything to add to that question uh not really but I, yeah i to totally agree yeah i think we're we're well set now for the business as a whole you know, very good position great um a question on security came uh from oni08 on telegram how has Veracity ensured the Vera wallet security? How do you ensure maximum protection for users' assets? Yeah, well, that's uh, that's another good question. I mean, the the security um, across Veracity is one, you know, one of the most important things that, that possibly is. So, uh, we store most of our, well, the majority of our tokens are store are, are in cold storage, and we use uh, trusted and industry leading third parties to provide that kind of uh, providers for that. Um, so that's kind of looking at the business 
as a whole. But then looking at um, users' assets, we have um, mandatory 2FA for all our account holders. We then have additional layers of security uh, that kind of working in the background to protect that we'll be considering stolen IDs, any leaked credentials from third party sites, fake IDs. Uh, and then we have other kind of automated security protocols just always in the background protecting our users' assets. Thank you. Um, we we had a couple of questions about your your token, VRA. Um, Drunken X3 on Twitter asked, "What is the economic model of Veracity Token VRA? What are the current usage scenarios?" Yeah, that's a great question. So we're always looking to maximize the value for VRA within our ecosystem. So VRA as an ecosystem token is essential for use in our advertising technology stack. Uh, when our proof of view module operates to record ad serve data, it interacts with our purpose-built sidechain, which as I mentioned before, is the Vera chain. And that requires the use of proof of view marker tokens. These are VRA tokens, which ex exist in a separate supply. Um, advertisers and publishers who run campaigns through the VeraViews ad tech stack must use VRA tokens from the market tokens to fund these ad campaigns. However, these VRA tokens, they never make their way into the circulating supply. They can't be traded or sold. However, on the back of that, when Veracity generates profits from ad campaigns, so for instance, for every ad that's successfully served Veracity through the Veraviews ad tech stack, Veracity would generate a revenue. Um, and we use a portion of this after operating profits um, to buy back and burn VRA from the circulating supply um, at market price. That generates like a positive demand for VRA. VRA is also used within our reward system for watch and earn, uh, which is a mechanism that rewards users for watching video content through the Vera player. Um, and that functionality is already live on Vera Esports, but we're soon going to be extending it um, and renewing how we look at the Vera, the watch and earn um, system and seeing how we can make it more rewarding and how we can introduce more functionality for VRA and that. And then there's also our staking program, uh, which I believe, um, I mean, I've been in loads, worked in loads of DeFi protocols and the APY we have in our staking program at the moment um, is, I think, one of the most attractive in the blockchain industry. Um, I think we've got a question about that lined up and Rob is probably better place to, to speak about that. Um, yes, uh, you read my mind. Only eight on the um, on Twitter asks about the VRA staking program. Um, what's the API? What's the minimum job to join uh, the program? Rob, would you be able to 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 shed some light on this? Okay. Sorry, Maria. My my stake keeps going. But did you mention the staking program? Yes. <laughs> Can you tell us yes. a little bit more um, about the staking also, program? The the uh, the Vera staking program has been running for a number of years, um, and the current rate is eighteen point two five percent per annum. So eighteen point two five percent per annum is the uh, staking rewards that Veracity offers, and uh, all the staking is managed through the the Veracity Vera wallet. Um, and the minimum amount to join the staking program is ten thousand Vera. Thank you. And what's the token supply? A question from Francuzi1 on Twitter. Yeah, so our total circulating supply is just over 10.3 billion VRA. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And it'll always remain so. Um, we're currently actively working with exchange partners um, such as yourselves and other third parties to ensure that that number is truly reflected across all services. We have a new white paper coming out and also a deep dive into our tokenomics. The last stage on that, it's all ready from our side. The last stage on that is just, as I'm sure you guys know, um, we need to notify all of our third party partners and yeah, just get the green light on that. Um, it's ready on our side. We're just waiting to to send that out into the world. Um, so yeah, the circulating supply is ten point just over ten point three billion VRA, um, and that's going to be the circulating supply. Thank you. Um, we've got a question from Marius Pervelis on Telegram. Will VRA take part in virtual reality gaming? Any plans to enter the metaverse? 
Yeah, this is a hot topic right now, right? But um, yeah, we don't have any plans to explore VR gaming as such. Um, it's certainly not something we would rule out. Um, I think Metaverse more broadly, perhaps. Um, but VR, I think it's quite niche at the moment. Um, I think that some of the, I mean, personally, like I'm big into to gaming and esports, one of the reasons why I joined Veracity. Um, I think VR has a long way to come, like in, in user experience. It sort of looks, I think I said in the AMA the other day, sort of like going back and playing, uh, playing the Wii, mm -hmm. um, the Nintendo Wii. So, um, yeah, I think that it, it sort of needs to improve a little bit, but we're not ruling it out. Um, and I think maybe uh, in the metaverse, we may look to do some more stuff. Yeah. Exciting. And Edwards Master touched on this in, in his um, question on Twitter. Um, uh, does Veracity have plans to venture into metaverse NFT? Can you um, can you elaborate on this? Uh, and I know uh, the NFT, we've got a lot of questions about NFT, so <laughs> there'll be opportunity to talk about uh, your, your projects. Um, yeah, sure. So this follows on pretty well from, from that last question. Um, so yeah, metaverse advertising is, is going to be huge, right? So um, last week, we were at London's leading advertising conference, uh, IAB Engage 2022, uh, where we heard a keynote address on the potential of metaverse advertising to connect with brands and consumers, and also reduce the reliance on physical stores. What was quite interesting in that is um, they brought up a really good point around a lot of people um, buy products at the moment for, from like uh, Boohoo was the example used, I think, or, or like Primark or something, um, but they return them. So they buy them, they try them on, they return them. And in actual fact, that process of uh, returning items, this sort of thing, um, is a huge uh, contributor to climate change because of the transport costs and this sort of thing. So I think Metaverse is going to be really important in allowing people to try things on in virtual reality. Um, and that is obviously going to have a profound effect on the advertising market. And it's going to have a profound effect on product placement within the metaverse. And at that point, when advertisers start to take out ad campaigns in the metaverse, they're going to need fraud protection. So that's how it would fit into our business case. Um, I think, you know, there are still going to be those avenues for fraud in the metaverse. I think people are going to find a way to, to say that they're in the metaverse having ads served when they're actually not. Um, so that's definitely something we're going to explore. And then we're also, as you just mentioned, we're embarking on our Veriverse NFT marketplace creation. Um, NFTs, obviously, they're always talked about in relation to the metaverse and how they can interact there. Um, our NFT marketplace is going to work seamlessly with Vera Esports to offer in-game items such as skins and, and weapons mods. So this is going to allow like players and esports enthusiasts in partnership with some of the largest games publishers in the world to explore like the metaverse in the context of gaming. So that's where we're going into it. That's our first like sort of foray into the metaverse. Um, but yeah, we're excited more broadly to explore like the possibilities of, of metaverse advertising and in-game advertising and how we can innovate within that space and you mentioned the nft marketplace um i may not speak for all of us but i've seen your sneak preview of veriverse um uh your soon to be launched nft marketplace can you tell us where you are in this uh, with this project what are the latest developments and what's the timeline looking like yeah, sure. So um, as you just mentioned, we did release a sneak peek of the Veriverse NFT marketplace. Uh, it's pinned on our Twitter if anyone wants to go and check that out. Um, it's just a few still images for now, but we do have like um, a proper stage insight plan where you can like, uh, you know, you'll be able to see in a bit more detail. We're going to produce some videos and that sort of thing, how the actual user flow of the Veriverse NFT marketplace is going to look. And then obviously we're on track to launch uh, our closed beta version of the Veriverse NFT marketplace with our gaming partners by the end of Q2 2022. And then moving into Q3 2022, um, we're going to open our doors for the first beta users uh, from public and from retail. Um, so that's sort of the timeline that we're looking at at the moment. Our initial feedback on the interfaces and the, the asset support and this sort of thing um, has been really good. It's primarily been built out, as you can see from that 
that sneak peek it's primarily been built out for in-game items um, we don't think there's anything that really serves that niche effectively at the moment and then by offering that alongside vera esports we've sort of got um i think captive audience is the wrong term but we've got this uh, huge group of of users who we know for a fact is interested in esports tournaments they're going to be waiting for these drops um so we're really excited to see how that develops um uh, musa and sal on twitter said today's nfts are a hot topic but nfts aren't just about art do you think your project will show a more realistic use case for nfts over time why do we need to take nfts seriously it's a really really good question and i actually think um probably from trying to explain nfts and stuff to like my mom um and and uh you know people of that generation like what actual utility they have it's always really difficult um and even for people who aren't crypto natives you know we probably all take for granted oh you can buy an nft on ethereum you can get them on solana this sort of thing um and we probably all know how to to buy an nft uh, I know that you guys have now got an NFT marketplace, but I believe that NFTs have suffered slow adoption by non-crypto natives because the support and infrastructure has been really difficult to navigate. So at the moment, we've got, um, you know, mainly you have to go through Web 3.0, so things like MetaMask. MetaMask is a great app. Um, I use it extensively. However, it's not really easy to navigate unless you know what you're doing with crypto. And at the same time, there hasn't really been any direct fear on ramps um, for NFTs. So obviously, like you guys at crypto.com have recognized this. And if you launched a, an incredibly user-friendly NFT marketplace um, and, you know, drops that are available for, for the average user with limited crypto knowledge. Um, but on the other hand, sim and similarly, Veriverse is going to be tailored to bring that ease of access for NFTs, but to gaming enthusiasts. So it's no secret that the gamers have been a little bit skeptical of NFTs. Um, so Steam moved to like ban NFTs um, or, or ban any like pro game using blockchain um, from their platform. Um, and another few gaming publishers have come out and said that they're not going to explore NFTs. But I really think that the problem we've got here as an industry is that the infrastructure has just been really poor. So, I mean, Steam already has like an in-game um, item marketplace. The problem is that you can't, you only own those items within the Steam ecosystem and they're sort of like a, a custodial provider. Whereas with an NFT based item, you would be the true like sovereign owner of that item. So I think they've got huge utility. I think it's just that we don't really, and we haven't to date had the infrastructure to support that. Um, I always sort of relate this back to like early internet gaming. So um, I've used this, this, analogy a few times but um the apple pippin apple were the first to release a games console uh, that had internet like online capabilities um and it was in 1996 and it was a total flop it's not because um that wasn't because internet gaming wasn't a good idea and it's not because internet gaming wasn't destined to take off as we know now everyone pretty much exclusively plays internet games it's because people at home still had dial-up they still had really poor internet connection so that infrastructure wasn't there and i think nfts are in a similar niche now where they're clearly useful and they clearly like have a path to adoption, but we just need that infrastructure and tools. That's what we're building for gaming um, with the Veriverse NFT marketplace. Thanks, Elliot. Um, we've got a question from Tree Brother on Telegram. With so many NFT markets already established, could you expand on your vision and the key differentiators that will allow you to conquer the market? Is the POV tech enough to do it? Uh, yeah, so it's certainly our proof of view enabled NFTs that will set us apart from competitors in the NFT marketplace at point of mint. Um, but actually, we're quite pleased that we're also working on interoperability initiatives. Um, so we can retrospectively or we're going to be able to retrospectively certify um, NF NFTs that have already been minted. Uh, we're going to be able to certify those with proof of view. Um, but we think it's really our like unique relationship with gaming partners that are going to enable us to offer like unique NFTs, um, such as you know uh, 
item drops from major esports tournaments. Um, and I think that's going to give us the edge and a unique selling position uh, where over like just a, uh, an NFT marketplace purely for artwork or something like that. And then we're also going to have um, a white label solution of the Veriverse available. So you're going to be able to take like our proprietary NFT marketplace, um, rebrand it and use it to sell uh, or trade NFTs of your solution. And obviously that's going to be, um, that's going to be like one of our most powerful b2b use cases that won't necessarily be seen in the like public market but yeah we're going to have that white label solution available and while we're at nfts kakashi 0898 asked what are the special features veracity uses to handle nft fraud and um how do you detect it uh besides uh the proof of view yeah this is a really really um interesting concept and i think our developers have done a fantastic job of building out this capability for um proof of view and how it can handle uh, smart contracts uh, sorry how it can handle and prevent nft fraud through proof of view enabled smart contracts so um we're gonna have a, a unique combination of our core blockchain based technology with select off-chain components just like it is in the proof of view ad tech stack and first and foremost, we're going to deploy the proof of view technology um, for immutability and decentralized storage of NFT data. So that's, that'll be at the point of mint. So this is going to be paired with a proof of view enabled smart contract um, that's going to provide like stable on-chain uh, functionality for NFTs. Uh, and it's going to ensure that the NFT data during its lifetime um, is traceable so you'll be able to see like changes in ownership and this sort of thing um, and the pro the like the process flow of this is that an nft would be minted via the proof of view certified mint and like i said before that could be retrospectively as well so you could pass an existing nft through our proof of view minting process um, that's immediately stored in the vera vault the Vera Vault indexes the NFT content and it'll store the verification hash for that NFT. Um, and then Proof of View records the NFT creation, the original owner credentials, um, and it records all the changes to the NFT ownership during its lifespan. What's quite interesting is, and I've had this question before and it's really valid, People have said, well, okay, like normal NFTs live on the blockchain anyway. We can already see where they've been, which addresses they've been to, where they've been traded. But the thing with NFT fraud at the moment is, um, and I'm not sure if you've seen it, but OpenSea just said that up to 80% of NFTs minted through its, its minting protocol are fraudulent. And what they mean is that people just take... Um, they just take like a, a piece of art or they take like a, a digital image and they mint it as a new NFT. Now, technically it's still an NFT, uh, but it's very hard to prove that it's not the original. So what proof of view will do is it will be like um, a certificate of authenticity. So it will like live within the metadata, within the hash of the NFT. And it'll be like, um, I often compare it to, you know, the shiny hologram codes that you get on like a bottle of wine to say that it's from a specific region. It's mm -hmm. going to be like that. So then we'll get to a point in the future where NFT marketplaces, that could be Veriverse, that could be Crypto.com's marketplace, or it could be like OpenSea could choose to use that certification standard and say, okay, we're only going to allow NFTs which have met proof of view uh, standard, proof of view certification to be sold and traded on our marketplace. So it'll prevent um, retail users from purchasing unknowingly a fraudulent uh, NFT. Obviously, there's still going to be like peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces where you can trade NFTs. And, you know, we think there's always going to be a market for that. But this mm -hmm. is sort of like a, a seal of approval that your NFT is genuine. Great. Uh, thank you for elaborating on this. That's very interesting. And 80% is, <laughs> there's so there's a lot of room for the opportunity here to, to, to bring solutions like this and, and detect fraud for sure. Um, oh, we've got uh, our last question for today um, on marketing. Uh, CFACT on Twitter asked, what are some effective ways Veracity will try to market its products? Any exciting marketing campaigns on the horizon? It's a really good question for me personally. Obviously, like uh, I like sort of head up uh, marketing of veracity. Um, so 
Right now, our focus is on building a strong presence with the brands and enterprises that will ultimately use our products. So I've spoken about this a lot, but it's really important to sort of drive home. So um, AMAs and stuff like this are really important for our crypto community and like a big shout out to all the veracity holders watching. I absolutely love our community. It's the most engaged community that I've ever worked with. Um, however, our core users and the people who are going to use the technology um, and actually like, you know, push our business case forward are enterprise users. So at our core, we're a B2B project. Uh, our main audience are publish our, pub, publishers sorry, and advertisers who are going to use our ad tech stack. And that's going to represent a significant uh, revenue stream for us. So... To that end, we're really ramping up our focus on industry events this year. So not only will our integration with the Brightcode video player give us access to a huge range of new enterprise clients, but we're also going to be connecting with these enterprise clients at major advertising events. So I mentioned that we'd just been to IAB Engage. That was one, and we held some really great key discussions there. Um, we're also going to be attending, and I'm going to be releasing a, an official post this week. We're going to be attending Adweek's Creative Capital event a in a couple of weeks in London. Um, and later on in the year, we're going to be attending Madfest and also um, Mindshares events as well. They're both in London. Uh, but what I'm really excited to share today, and it's sort of the first time that I spoke about it, uh, is that we have really big plans for this year's Cannes Lion Festival. So it's a festival of creativity. Um, literally thousands of the world's leading advertising companies, professionals and creatives sort of descend on uh, the south of France for a week's networking, deal making, um, and just basically, you know, doing doing business in a nice setting. Um, but yeah, I'm pleased to sort of announce that we're going to be hosting and sponsoring some activity there in the Cannes Lion Festival. Uh, we're going to invite over 40 of the leading advertising execs um, and industry leaders and some of the uh, sort of um, standards bodies uh, to join us and learn about the Veribuse ad tech stack and how it can transform the, uh, their business. So we're going to have more information on that and exactly what our activity is going to be there, but we are going to have a big presence there. Um, so to conclude, we are really ramping up our B2B marketing and our community are going to see more of this in the coming months. Wow, that's so exciting. Um, we're definitely going to be looking out for updates on this and, and, and news. Um, so this wraps up all the AMA questions. Thank you so much, Elliot and Robert, for taking the time to speak with us today. And a big thank you to the community, as always, for sending in questions. Before we say goodbye, Rob, Elliot, do you have a final message for those who are watching? No, Rob, I don't know if you've got uh, anything well, you want to I say. Uh, well, firstly, I'd like to apologize, Maria. My connection has been terrible, so I've been kind of in and out for this conversation. Um, so this is, sincere apologies. Maybe we can do this again at some other point in the future. That'd be great. Um, but I would like to say sincerely thanks to our community. Um, I've been with the business four years. They've been with the business for, for a, ver a variety of times, but they've always been really supportive. They've challenged us in the right ways, and they, they're helping us become the, the business that we want to be and the project that we want to be. So thank you. Amazing. Thank you to the community. And uh, you can follow Elliot on Twitter at blocked underscore writer and Veracity uh, at Veracity Tech. Be sure to follow Crypto.com to stay informed about all of our coming events and announcements. Follow us on Twitter, Crypto.com, as well as our official Telegram channels and our YouTube channel where this AMA will remain viewable after today. See you later.